Welcome back to the Everyday Father. Excited to have you here. Thank you for joining me. We're slowly creeping into grill season. We're slowly getting there. The weather's starting to get a little more consistently better. We're starting to see some nicer temperatures. The sun's staying up a little bit longer. So I thought, what better way to start this next week off than with a little bit of a grill session for you? I, uh, I'm a big Big fan of grill season. I love getting out there and cooking lots of food at one time, having things prepped for the entire week, and using this nice weather to enjoy some outdoor time while I prep food. So this week, this last week, my it was my wife's birthday, so we got to celebrate that a little bit. It was awesome. We spent some time together, got her a neat little gift that I will share uh, in an upcoming episode. Uh, because it's going to have to do with some other meal prepping and some dessert making and some things like that. But for right now, what I want to do is talk to you about this meal that I made the other day for a birthday it was a Japanese steakhouse chicken fried rice meal. All right. So for those of you who like going to those Japanese steakhouses where they bing, 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 and they do all the cool stuff, I don't do that. I'm not that good. However, <laughs> I can cook the food. I do have the, the recipe and I feel like I've gotten it pretty close to what it's like at the restaurant. So we do have that going. First thing we're going to do is we're going to prep this grill. We're going to make sure we get it right. And for those of you who are looking to do this meal yourself, uh, a Blackstone or some type of similar cooking surface is highly recommended. This is a lot harder if you're doing it with a bunch of different cooking apparatuses in a different capacity. I, I just don't recommend it because as you see when we get through this, as we get deeper into this, it takes up a ton of space. So there's going to be a lot of things happening. So for this particular meal, we use two cups of rice cooked. We've got a big old bowl of veggies. We've got mushrooms, cucumbers, onions, Mix that all together. Throw that thing on the black stone there. We got a couple of things of chicken. We'll use uh, the rice and the eggs. And boom, soy sauce. Pretty simple meal. Pretty simple. Not a whole lot going on. The biggest challenge with this one is as you as we get going here, you're going to see there's just a lot happening. So I start by cooking the chicken. Chicken cake takes a little bit longer than everything else to cook. So I want to make sure I get that cooked all the way through because there's nothing... There's nothing worse than not having cooked chicken. Uh, it is, you know, uh, if you've grilled before, you understand that we, we don't do medium rare chicken. That's just not a real thing. So we want to make sure we spend enough time getting that cooked and prepped. So that's part one. Get that on there. As the chicken's cooking, usually I flip, get it set to the other side, start getting it ready to go. Then I will throw the veggies on. All right, a little oil down, put the veggies on, let them start to simmer and cook. And while they're cooking, I'm going to cut the chicken into cubes. So that way it'll cook a little bit faster. And so now I'm cutting, prepping, working, mix in some of the, uh, the veggies, start moving them around, cut the chicken up nice and small, throw a little soy sauce on there. So it starts getting some flavor. It'll also speed up the cooking process because that'll start to sizzle and it'll get it going a little bit hotter. So we get that all mixed in. Once I feel pretty good about the, the chicken being cooked well and the, the veggies being cooked well, I will push them off to the side in my cold zone. This is why I like the Blackstone because I have cooking zones and I have cooling zones. And my cooling zones are more like warm zones because I just I don't turn the flame on. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Blackstone, big square flat cooking surface, right? It's got burners and I've got cooking zones. So I use the two middle zones and then I'll push everything to the side when I'm not cooking and then I'll pull it back in when I want to cook it again. So done with that, pushed it to the side. I'm going to cook my eggs first, let them start to, to fry, mix that up, start getting that going. As those are frying, I'm dumping the rice on. Okay. And when the rice goes on, a little layer of oil and then start mixing in the soy sauce. As the soy sauce is getting mixed in, the eggs are frying up. I'm chopping those bad boys into smaller pieces, getting it ready to roll. Eggs and rice will come together first, and then I will pull everything else in and mix it all up. This is where it gets a little challenging because if you've not done this before, uh, the, the meal is heavy, and it's going to take you a little bit of work to, to continuously mix this around. So just keep throwing it around. Mix it in good. Add some more soy sauce as you feel you need. Make sure it's got that nice kind of brownish look. And... 
We're going to let that simmer. We're going to let that sizzle. We're going to mix it up from time to time, make sure it's cooked all the way through, mixed in really well. And then as you can see here, it makes a ton of food. So here comes my serving bowls. I got two full serving bowls full of chicken fried rice. Um, and to top it off, you know, get a little, little yum yum sauce on there and uh, have yourself a nice little meal. The best part about this is because of the amount of food you're going to have leftovers. So I've been munching on this for the last several days after cooking it, which is awesome. That's exactly what I want. I want to make sure that I make something that's going to provide food for the coming days. I like to have leftovers for lunch because I know what I'm getting as far as the type of food, right? Lunch is the the hardest one for me with, with the way my day is set up. Um, and for a lot of people, I understand dinner is the hardest one, but I, I make, we make dinner pretty regularly. So that's not as big of an issue for us. But lunch for me, if I don't have leftovers, then I'm just like, well, what am I going to grab? What am I scrounging for? What am I going to put together? I don't like cooking lunch. I like reheating lunch. So this works well for me. If you're the opposite of that, understand that, make the adjustment that you need to, and maybe you're making lunch with the idea of reheating for dinner. Right. If dinner's the hardest one, or you got a meal prep for dinner ahead of time. These are just little things to make your nutrition just a little bit better. I think the more we dial in the nutrition, the easier our health becomes. And that's the best way for me is to make sure that I'm planning ahead and having a plan for all the different things that might go on. So, like for this week particular, we've done the grill with multiple leftovers, and then we did two crock pot meals just because I'm traveling with softball, my wife's working, getting things ready. She doesn't want to make something when she comes home. So we're going to have it made for when she shows up to the door. Be creative with your nutrition, be consistent with your nutrition, and you're going to have results that you want. So I hope that you enjoyed the uh, the cooking one here. Like I said, I'm going to get you a few more recipes in the future here. I think this is a kind of a cool way to add some dynamic to the uh, the everyday father that, you know, gives you some things that you can start to implement for yourself at home. So give this a shot. If you have any additional questions about the specifics of this recipe, shoot me an email, charles at the edge of greatness project.com. Happy to go into it for you. If you have uh, ideas for recipes that you'd like to see in the future, if I know them, uh, I will give them a shot. If I don't know them and you have the recipe, I'll give them a shot. So uh, connect with me there. Let's get this thing rolling. Let's have some fun. Hope you guys have a great one, and we will connect again here on the other side of this commercial with a movement of the week. We'll see you in a little bit. One week after launching our exclusive sneak peek, NGBN TV was live for three days of continuous coverage from Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. NGBN TV is live from Las Vegas for Super Bowl 58. The one-of-a-kind streaming TV network for men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s was the conversation for the big game about men's mental health in the world of athletes, celebrities, and influencers were on notice. But we're just getting started with new partnerships announced like the Team Nike 3-on-3 Championship and new platforms available to download the NGBN TV app. So, what are you waiting for? Download the app today from your favorite streaming device or check us out at ngbn.tv. This is NGBN TV. Hey, it's AC of AC Sports Live, an interactive sports talk show where your comments are part of the show. Every show we focus on the sports stories of today with commentary on sports takes, my Two Cents, which is a reaction to my social media feed. Sports Flicks, where we take a look at sports movies and give a quick review. We have a segment called Mental Reps, where we have words of inspiration to help battle the dark side of men's mental health. And then there's the Tender Love Report. Who's being soft or petty in the world of sports? Streaming live on the NGBN TV network, Roku, Amazon Fire, and other social media platforms. All takes are welcome under one condition. Say it with your chest. I'll see you there. Hello and welcome back to another Movement of the Week. This week I really wanted to dive into one of my mobility and recovery workouts for my lower body. 
I spend a lot of time lifting heavy weights. I really like heavy squats, heavy deadlifts, moving weight that challenges me. But in order to continue to be able to do that, I also have to take time to recover and to repair and to make sure that I'm moving in the right planes, in the right ranges, and being able to take care of that through mobility work. So this week and this particular day, I'm doing a series of mobility exercises that challenges my range of motion, my flexibility, mobility, and strength in some different positions. A lot of these mobility movements require like knees over the toes positions, which is very hard and very challenging, and then some hip mobility stuff. So I like to typically start with some type of squat movement. And so in this week, I'm doing a squat with some knee touches, some prisoner squats, and then after the prisoner squat, I was doing some squat with thoracic rotation. So the first one, that simple here, we're gonna sit nice and low, and here we're gonna feel that knee drive down while we keep our chest up. So we're really trying to keep that chest up. We're trying to turn the hip in, bring the knee to the ground, tap, come back up. From that, we're going into our prisoner squat. So that's, I put my hands behind the ears. I don't like to interlock because it pulls on the head. So just the fingertips behind the ears and squeeze the elbows back is plenty good. And then we're gonna sit nice and deep, keep that chest up, get that full range of motion. I like to pause so I feel the bottom of my squat, make sure I'm sitting in my heels, squeezing back up to the top. From there, in this first set, I did a squat with a thoracic rotation. So again, we're sitting nice and deep. From here, I'm gonna put my palms down to the floor. I'm bracing on the inside and rotating up as high as I can. If you notice here, when I rotate this way, I'm a li little bit locked up going to the right. I'm also tight in my left lat right now. I had some kind of weird tweak the other day. That's part of the reason why I'm locked up on that side, but it's also a reason why doing that movement is beneficial. So that'll help work some of that out. A lot of these, these exercises, what I'm trying to do is eight to 12 reps, two to three sets. I'm not going heavy in this particular day. I'm just focusing on range of motion and feeling each one of these movements happen. From there, I do like to work into a variety of lateral movement-based exercises. So I tend to do the lateral lunge where I will sit, drive back up, going back side to side. And then I will also do some lateral lunge flow, which here, and I'm just gonna push across. So I'm feeling that stretch. I'm staying the same height. I'm pretending like I'm in a tunnel and I'm working side to side. Each of those works in that frontal plane, but they do a little bit of different work based on being able to come up and down versus sliding side to side. From there, I've been working on some knees over toes movements. So there's two movements here on the knees over toes. First is just a stand up tall, drive the hips forward, drive the knees towards the ground, try to feel yourself reach, tap, come back up. All right, we're really trying to feel that lean back, tap the, come back up. The more we can lean, the more we can drive the knees, the more we're gonna work that position. The other one was a squat flow, sit, rock, okay? So we're sitting, from here we're gonna drive the knees, drive back, stand up, okay? Sit, drive the knees, drive back, stand up. Again, eight to 12, two to three sets. Finally, what I did here is I moved into a lunge position. And again, I'm really trying to focus on knees over toes, range of motion, getting that big stretch flex, okay? So in this position here, I'm driving the knee forward as far as I can, pushing back up. Knee forward, pushing back up. We'll hit both sides. And finally, the last thing, I call these hip rocks. We're gonna start in the kneeling position, start nice and tall, keep the core engaged. And what we're trying to do is keep the hips forward and we're gonna rock back as far as we can. We're gonna control, 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 fire through the quads to get back up. Control, 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 fire through the quads to get back up. Once we get through those 
groups of exercises, you will find that the quads will feel like they have worked really well. The legs will be relatively fatigued for not having any additional weight being used. But tomorrow, you're gonna start to feel like you can move better. Your hips are gonna open up. Your legs are gonna move better. If you've been dealing with knee pain, you're gonna find that this helps to strengthen around the knee joint and provides you with better stability, better strengthening around that knee. I've been doing this for a while now and I had some pretty decent bad knee pain for a little bit. And now that I've added these things in, I am moving so much better. The knee pain is going away. And I think that if you do these things, you'll move better, you'll feel better, and you'll get stronger. So give this little circuit a try. I think you're gonna like it. I think it's gonna work a lot without any weight. And we'll see you guys in the gym. What's up, my name is Chris Rubio, and I'm the host of The Rubio Method on the NGBN TV network. Focus, focus up. Long snapping and life are very, very similar. We have a great show that's gonna educate you, inspire you, and most importantly, entertain you. I say most importantly because that's what I really wanna do, and we're just kinda of going on this journey together, and I'm gonna make sure as we go on this journey together, you're gonna to have a good time while doing it. So check out The Rubio Method on NGBN TV. Hey, I'm Micah McCreary. And I'm Rich Fry. Welcome to True X Outdoors. The ultimate outdoor show. So come tag along with us as we experience thrilling adventures in hunting and fishing. From the mountains to the rivers, we'll bring you the most action-packed outdoor experiences. Watch us now on NGBN TV. True X Outdoors. Hey guys, welcome back to the Everyday Father. I wanted to share a win with you this week. I've been I've been working really hard at trying not to overly push my kids to do certain things. You know, one of the really hard things for me as a parent, as a former athlete, more than anything else is I want my kids to want to pursue sports because it's an interest of mine. But I also don't want to be that parent that pushes their kids into doing everything. I want them to choose to do it. And for a lot of this, this is a challenging, this is a challenging thing because, you know, I want to go out and I want to shoot hoops in the back and I want them to come join me and I want to go play catch with my son, even though he's five, that's maybe a little early, but again, there's excitement around that. There's, there's fun in seeing them take on things that you enjoy. But I guess the idea behind this is I wanted to, I want to encourage you to pump the brakes to, instead of saying, Hey, we're going to go do this. I like this approach of inviting them to join you. They don't have to say yes. If they say no, you're like, all right, cool. I'm going to go do my thing. And I think the more you do the stuff that you want them to join you in, the more likely they are to show up and do that. For example, every time I go work out, I invite my kids into the garage. I invite them to come be a part of the process, even though I know that if they're there, it's going to slow things down. It makes my workouts harder. I don't get quite as good of a, of a workout in. It, it's not always about that for me. It's about modeling the behavior. And this week, my son decided he wanted to start doing pull-ups. And lo and behold, he actually pulled off a few. That was kind of impressive. But it's the first time he's actually shown interest in doing part of the workout with me, being in the workout with me. He's come out a few times. He'll goof around for a minute. He'll hang out and then he'll go do whatever. But this week he got involved. He wanted to do push-ups. He wanted to do pull-ups. He wanted to be in the workout with me. He didn't just want to watch the workout. And I think that for a lot of people, we, we push so hard to get something to happen that we end up encouraging the opposite to occur. You know, I've been guilty of that in certain areas of my life doing other things. Thankfully, I haven't done that with my kids yet, but I could see how that becomes a thing. It becomes an issue. And so I think we need to really spend time instead of, hey, we're going to do this. One, we ask them, would you like to join? And two, we model. The more we do that, I think the more they start to pick up on this is this is something that dad likes, this is something that mom likes, this is something that I should try. I should check this out. And then if they enjoy it, we encourage that joy and we build upon that. The The sports side of things actually has started to take hold as well. The weather is changing. It's getting nice out. Um, 
my daughters are both very let's get a ball and play. You know, my youngest is actually shooting hoops. My middle child has always been, let's take swings off the tee. Let's go and play basketball. Let's play catch. And my son is taking notice that that's cool. I, I, she's getting my attention one because I'm outside doing it. And so she's joining me. And so now he's coming out. And the other day he had a ball across the street off the tee. He hasn't swung off the tee in a year and a half, probably. But he came out and he saw her hitting and he goes, I want to try and takes a big old hack and drives it across the street. So I guess the biggest thing that I'm trying to to communicate here is the best thing we can do to get the result that we want is to encourage through modeling ourselves. I think if we're really intentional about this is just something I do and I'd love it if you join me. There's a very good chance that over time, if you continue to ask Eventually, they're going to go, yeah, no, I'll come do that. Let's do that. And then they're going to ask you, hey, can we do this? Because now he's been asking all week, can we go out to the garage and do pull-ups? After he realizes he can actually do one, He now he wants to do it more often. And I think part of that, too, is when he did the pull-up, I was genuinely excited and surprised. So I showed him that. I, I celebrated his win, gave him a hug, gave him a high five. And, you know, of course who wouldn't like to do that again and let's get another hug and a high five. So the support, the celebration, the joy, those are all things that I believe need to be part of what you're doing to create the situation for your kids to take on the tasks that you want them to. It's a challenge. Trust me. I get it. I I, I really want to go and say, Hey, we're going to go play catch, you know, or we're going to go kick the soccer ball or we're going to go run around in the backyard and play sports but he's not there yet. So I'm going to let him tell me when he is. And, you know, if, if he goes down the path where eventually he doesn't actually play sports, then, you know, so be it. But I believe because I'm around sports enough, I believe because I enjoy sports enough that if I encourage him by asking him to join me, eventually he's going to want to do that as well. And I think it's worth the risk that to not push him into something that he doesn't want to do. I'm going to leave you today with a little video um, before we get to the the final part of all this. But I this week in my my workout, I was doing some mobility stuff, which you saw earlier. And my youngest decided she wanted to do some step ups while I was doing lunges on the on the plate. And then she wanted to do uh, some some kneeling hip back hip drops, um, which was fantastic. So I'm going to leave you with a little something goofy today. I uh, hope you enjoy watching my daughter get involved in my workout and how that looks. But, you know, the idea here, again, we're just modeling. We're trying to be an example. We're trying to show them how it's done. We're trying to make the right choices through the actions that we're taking. So keep showing up for those who need you the most, guys. And until next week, this was the Everyday Father. Enjoy this. <laughs> we'll see you.